Welcome back to the Engineer Dangler. Back in the shop with a list of things I want to uh, make videos of. So the general topic will be getting a reflective metallic finish on your lures or whatever else you're working on. Uh, and these are the different methods that I'll cover. Uh, I may cover a couple at a time depending on how in depth I'm going to get in on these things. No promises on how quickly I can do this. Uh, it's kind of involved. But we'll start off with tape. Uh, plastic tape, vinyl tapes, um, plastic sheeting, that kind of thing, uh, and duct tape. There's some pretty shiny duct tape out there. Um, spray paint. I know what you're thinking. It doesn't work very well. Well, actually, I found a spray paint that does a pretty doggone good job, and I'll show you what it is. Foil, and you, there's a million YouTubes out there. Probably not a million, but there's a lot. There's a lot of YouTubes out there. Uh, covering foil, different ways to put foil on lures and how to manipulate it. Uh, I'll show you a few things that I do a little differently. Um, that will probably be very short or maybe uh, may include transfer sheets. Transfer sheets is something I discovered uh, about a year ago and it took me a while to figure out a way to get them on to get the transfer on the lure without having it look like just it was glued on with snot. But it comes out good and I'll show you what I found out and how to do it. Spray on chrome, which is a spray chrome, super chrome stuff. Uh, I've used it. I bought the whole kit, spent uh, hundreds of dollars to use it. Mediocre. You guys decide. Uh, spray on silver plate. Probably the best finish you can get. If you can get it. <laughs> it's a little hard to put on. It's complicated and just protecting the surface is a little bit complicated as well. Um, and then electroplating, I won't cover. I don't know why I wrote it there. But maybe we'll just talk about it in theory. I don't do it. I know how to do it, but I'm not gonna. It's just it, too many chemicals, too big of a setup, uh, and a lot of money up, up front, so eh, no. So this is what I'm gonna do. Hopefully, I'll be able to get through most of it in the next couple of months. But I'll hit one at a time. If anybody out there has a preference, wants to see one before the other, let me know. I've got these listed in order of uh, difficulty from easy to hard and result from poor to best. Uh, and there's a little fluctuation in there. But more or less that's correct. Uh, anyway, first, tape and plastic. Stay tuned. Okay, let's talk about tapes and how to use tapes to get a metallic reflective surface on your lure. Uh, if you haven't seen my putting silver plate on a lure video, you should watch that just to see what my goal is. That's really the ultimate. So here you have some duct tape. As you can see it's sort of holographic. This one's uh, chrome-ish and this one's gold. And then these, this is actual self-adhering uh, sheets again vinyl uh, and this is uh, a vinyl tape uh, kind of like a scotch tape you can see it's got the thickness of about a, a packing tape or a box tape here's here are the drawbacks for these different types of uh, finishes the vinyl like these they won't conform to compound curves so if you have a lure like most lures that don't have a completely flat side but they have compound curves which is curves leading into other curves um, then you're gonna have a hard time putting this on because it, it just it won't conform it'll tend to want to uh, have uh, small bends it'll end up with these open pleats and and weird folds that you that just won't look good you won't be able to paint over it well and it doesn't really pay to use it now there are ways you can use this. You can use it as highlight pieces. You can, for instance, make a, a gill plate or lip plate, um, or you can do uh, just a simple stripe, which conf it'll conform in this direction, but of course, if it, if it were much wider than that, you'd get separation. So something like this looks pretty nice. You can go from the back of the eye back and it'll give you a little bit of flash. You can also, if you do have flat lures like this, has rounded rounded uh, top and bottom but flat sides you can create a template and put it on the flat side 
and have it adhere. And this is this has been off for a while, so it, it's not going to stick that great. But you can see it; it'll conform enough to give you a nice shiny surface. And this is just this tape. You can buy this anywhere where they have a, a craft section. Uh, you'd be able to pick the, something like that up. These sheets are a little stiffer. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know that the um, the thickness of this tape is a little heavier than foil. As you move on to this with the paper backing, uh, it's also self-adhering. Self has the same problems with uh, with being able to conform to those curves. Uh, and on top of that, it's a little thicker. But it does. Look at that that finish. If you can get uh, you know finish like that on your flat lure, that's fantastic. These are cool looking. I really like the way uh, the duct tape looks. I like the holographic effect. The drawback on these things, they, they'll conform a little bit to compound curves, not very much. But the problem is the the glue on the back of this, and since this is on this uh, adhesive is on kind of like a fabric, it absorbs chemicals in your resin. So, so when you clear coat it, you'll see that this thing will begin to actually melt sort of it'll dissolve into the um, the epoxy clear coat and it'll it'll get soft and sort of wrinkle up it doesn't work too well i guess if you're looking for a lure that's completely coated with a chrome like finish this won't do it for you but let me show you something i discovered just a few weeks ago this is the kind of material that they use when they're making um, signs and vehicle wraps, those kinds of things. They cut them with computers and they print on them with computers. It's uh, self-adhering. But the beauty of it, it's, it's kind of heavy as far as uh, the gauge, the thickness of the actual material. But the beauty of it is one, it's very reflective. But two, is that it's, it's flexible. And you can heat it with a, a heat gun or a blow dryer and stretch it out over compound curves. It's limited, but it's pretty doggone good. Gives you a pretty nice result. Let me uh, try to do it. Now, I haven't perfected the method, but I think with a little practice, you can really get good results on your lure. Here's the deal. I've, I've got my uh, heat gun set up over here so that I can heat it up. This is the lure. I'm not gonna take super care. This is really just for demonstration, not really instructional. The heat gun is gonna be on and blowing, so it's gonna make a lot of noise. So I might, I don't know, put some dorky background music. So you can see the kind of results you can get. And of course, I really don't have the skills built yet, but I think I can do it. Uh, so from here, what you wanna do is trim off the excess. Okay, so here's the finish. It's not too bad. I, I trimmed it back. And to really see the shine on it, you gotta pull off this protective coat. And you can really see how shiny it is. These wrinkles would go away if I had done it correctly, but it looks pretty doggone good. Well, thanks for watching the first installment of getting a metallic finish on your on your lure. The next one is gonna be uh, spray paint. Keep watching, subscribe, uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what you want to see, and actually one of the uh, points of input that I would like to get from uh, you guys that are watching steadily is what do you think is a good link for a video uh, let me know what you think uh, and do what you can to help me out I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year okay catch you on the next one thanks for watching